G'day everyone, my name's Andrew and welcome back to another ranking video on the channel. Today, I'm jumping onto the Doctor Who 60th anniversary slash Shuti Gatwa slash Disney train and I'm going to be ranking every New Who series from best through to worst. So I've been watching Doctor Who for a fair while now, it was about six or seven when I started watching, can't put an absolute finger on it, but uh, it was around that time and with there being a long gap between the power of the Doctor and the Star Beast, about 13 months, it was really a period where I rediscovered my love for the show because I kind of lost it a little bit, but um, with all of that, I rewatched the entire uh, New Who series and uh, I thought it'd be a great idea to rate every episode that I watched out of 10 and then put them all into a massive spreadsheet to get a average ranking of a series uh, based on the ratings from every episode. So I did all that, and I've got a definitive ranking of best through to worst. So I've got my Doctor Who t-shirt on, which is way too small because I haven't worn it for about 10 years, uh, but it's all I've got. So anyway, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So kicking off the ranking with number 13, I have got a series with a rating of 6.55 out of 10, and that is Series 11. Uh, of course, Series 11 was Jodie Whittaker's first series at the helm as the Doctor, and also Chris Chibnall's first of his showrunner tenure. And um, for the most part, even though it finds its way down at number 13, I still enjoy the majority of episodes from this series. But the main issue with me is that it's got a few really poor episodes and no episodes that are really, really good. Um, and that really, yeah, just lets it down. It's overall, I'd say, it's just a very mediocre series. Um, but, you know, for the most part, um, I like the Doctor. I think she does a good job. I like the companions, even though Yaz is kind of non-existent in a lot of it. But, um, no, nah, it's, you know, 6.5. That's about a C+. Plus. It's not that bad. Um, so, yeah, my, my favourite episodes from the series would probably be The Woman Who Fell to Earth and Demons of the Punjab. They're probably the top two. Um, and least favourite, definitely... Um, I was going to say Planet of the Spiders, that's not what it's called. Uh, Arachnids in the UK, so yeah. Anyway, moving on to better things. Okay, so coming in now at number 12, I have got a series with a rating of 6.85 out of 10, and it is series 12, fittingly enough, 12 at 12. Um, this is, of course, Jodie Whittaker's second series as the Doctor, um, and... I think overall, as a series, it is a lot better than Series 11. I think having returning uh, villains and returning characters definitely helps it a lot with the Master and the Cybermen. Um, and it just has a much bigger series feel with, you know, starting with Spyfall, ending with the Ascension of the Cybermen, uh, Timeless Children. It just has an overall series arc, which is a lot better, which Series 11 didn't. Um, and yeah, I like the Doctor a bit better in Series 12. I think she gets better as her series progress. This time, the companions are, I would say, a little bit better, but now Ryan kind of takes the back seat and just disappears off the face of the planet. But yeah, again, like Series 11, it really just gets let down by poor episodes. Um, because I would say Series 12 has got higher peaks than Series 11. So yeah, my favourite from Series 12 would probably be Spyfall. Oh, well, actually, yeah, Spyfall and The Haunting of Villa Diodati. Uh, least favourite. I think everyone's least favourite is uh, Orphan 55 of Series 12. That episode stinks. All right, we now jump up to a series with 7.08 out of 10 uh, as my rating, and that is Series 13. That comes in at number 11, or Flux. Um, this series is a bit of a funny one. Because it's not like it's it's like kind of a mini series. It's kind of half the half the length of the previous ones, um, and for the most part, I think since it was done in COVID times, they did a really good job um, overall. And really, you can't tell that a lot of it was done in really you know COVID restrictions. Uh, so they did a really good job on the production side of things. The only issue I have with this series is the last episode, and being a full six episode story, if the ending doesn't stick, it kind of makes the whole thing suck. Um, episode one through five are brilliant, 
but the last episode sucks. Um, I like the Doctor the most in this series compared to series 12 and 11. I think she's awesome in series 13. But, yeah, um, it just sucks because I, I like a lot of what happens in this series, but the ending doesn't stick, and, yeah, it's it, not good. Um, my favourite episode, uh, Village of the Angels, uh, absolutely brilliant. Maxine Alderton, two for two in her writing contributions in series 12 and 13. Uh, but yeah, my least favourite, definitely uh, The Vanquishers. Okay, now we hop up into the top 10 with a series that has got a rating of 7.88 out of 10. That's a big improvement. Uh, and that is a series that I think some people won't be happy with me, but I'll explain before you get on your keyboards and get all angry. Uh, I've got series six. Now, I love the River Song episodes. The Impossible Astronaut, Day of the Moon, Good Man Goes to War, Let's, hit, uh, let's Kill Hitler, and then uh, with the Wedding of River Song. I like the overall story. The Doctor being the test elector in the end is a bit of a cop-out for me personally, but I think overall the story's pretty damn good. It's more the episodes in between that I'm not fond of, um, like The Curse of the Black Spot, and like the the flesh two-parter uh night terrors episodes like that i'm just not really fond of them i think the in-between episodes uh behind that main story just kind of uh boring and just average but yeah I, overall i still very much enjoy the series this is kind of the point like the the three chibnall whittaker series they're, they're a massive step down uh, everything from here upwards is so much better and I really do enjoy it so even though it comes in as the fourth worst on the list I still think it's good so don't get angry with me my favorite episodes would definitely be the impossible astronaut day of the moon um, as a two-parter it's brilliant and uh, least favorite I think has to go to night terrors um, yeah oh hang on Oh, sorry, a stupid cat was begging for food. All right, moving on now at number nine. I have got a series with a rating of 7.916 out of 10, and that is series 10. Um, a lot of people say this is Capaldi's strongest series, um, but I very heavily disagree. Uh, it has its peaks, big time, but it also has... Kind of a lot of what happens in series six. It just has a lot of mediocre episodes. But, you know, like, I feel like the pilot is a great introduction, but then we get a few episodes in a row that are just average. Then we get extremists. Then, you know, the episodes after that are just pretty average. And then we get the finale, which is awesome. Um, it's inconsistent. Um, and overall, yeah, the rating kind of just says a thousand words. It, it, it you know, I, I and it, it matches up really how I feel. I feel like, some of it's really good, but also a lot of it's not great. So, favourite episode, definitely World well Enough in Time, The Doctor Falls by an absolute mile. Uh, least favourite, probably Knock Knock. I don't know, but there's a few that are kind of, I hold on the same kind of level. Um, maybe Empress of Mars, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. So now up to number eight, with also a rating of 7.916 out of 10, but I'll explain why I like this one, or why I've ranked it higher. And that is Series 8. Now, the reason why I've ranked it higher is because as a whole, when I kind of come to think about it, I do enjoy this series overall a lot better. I feel like overall, though there are two pretty crappy episodes in Kill the Moon and In the Forest of the Night, it is a bit more consistent. Um, you probably think I'm just saying stupid things outside of my mouth because actually when I come to think about it, it is a bit inconsistent as well. But I think overall, I just rather it a bit better. Um, of course, that's Peter Capaldi's first series as the Doctor. Yeah, um, it, it's an okay series. I think the, the finale just falls flat a little bit. If it had a better finale, I think it would be better overall. Um, but anyway, yeah, so... Uh, Favourite episode would have to be... Ooh, probably Flatline. I really like that episode. I think it's great. Um, least favourite... In the, oh, no, that's not even a competition. In the Forest of the Night sucks. Okay, coming in now at number 7, I have got a series with a rating of 7.923 out of 10, just a little bit above the last two, uh, and that is Series 7. Uh, this is, of course, Matt Smith's last series as the Doctor, and it's a bit disjointed, um, and for some people, overall, 
they don't really hold this series that high, and I can understand why. Uh, I did not mean for that to rhyme, that just happened. Um, but yeah, I, I personally, I, I think it's a good series. Um, I don't, I don't think it needs two-parters. I think that is one kind of complaint people have is like there's no two-parters in Series 7. There's only one in Series 8 and kind of just, you know, two-parters are awesome and I get that. But I think the individual single stories are pretty good. The Power of Three is the only one that's like, well, it doesn't really finish that good. But all of them, yeah, there are some really good ones, but there are some, you know, more mediocre. But overall, I quite like it. I think it's good. Um, whether I'd rather Part A with Amy and Rory better than Part B with Clara, I don't really know. I'd probably hold them about the same. Um, but, yeah, I, overall, I think it's quite good. So, uh, my favourite episode episodes would have to be Angels Take Manhattan and Name of the Doctor. I can't really split those two. I think they're just both really awesome episodes. Least favourite, probably got to be Cold War. Um, there's a couple, yeah, yeah there's, there's a couple kind of just average ones in there, but I think Cold War is probably the worst out of all of them. So, uh, yeah, moving on now. So coming in at number six, I have got a series with a rating of also 7.923 out of 10, and that is Series 2. That is, of course, David Tennant's first series as the Doctor. Um, and this series is a funny one, because this, it really has a fair chunk of episodes that are quite just, you know, average. Um, but then it has some episodes which are absolutely spectacular. Um, and that is the reason why, uh, even though it has the same rating as Series 7, I would pop it a bit higher. It's, it, it is quite inconsistent, I will say. But, I mean, it's got the Satan Pit. It's got Doomsday. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, I don't think, you know... I don't think I can put series ahead of it when uh, series two's got those kind of episodes. And overall, you know, yeah, th though it does have its weak spots, I, I love David Tennant as the Doctor in his first series. I think he's great. I think Rose is awesome as well. Um, and overall, I, I just I, I do like a lot of the episodes in the series, uh, though it does have its weaker moments. So my favourite episode uh, would have to be probably oh probably Doomsday. Yeah, Do Do Doomsday is uh, is awesome. Um, I shouldn't say probably, it is the best episode of the series. Um, but yeah, I also love Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit as well. That's awesome. Um, least favourite, well, hmm, Love and Monsters. I've never been, I've never been really fond of that episode, and I think it's lucky to get, uh, the rating that I've given it, because it's... <sighs> They've even got a bit of a love life. Yeah, I don't need to talk about it. Alright, we've climbed into the top five now. And along with climbing into the top five, we have also jumped into the eight out of ten ratings for each series. And that is now starting off with a series with a rating of 8.08 out of ten, and that is series five. Some people might be a little bit kind of like, really? I thought you'd rate this one higher. I like it. I really like this series, but not as much as the other ones above it. Um... It's just my opinion, your opinion's quite different, but I feel like Series 5 does have a couple of weaker kind of episodes um, that I'm not too fond of. Other people might be fond of them, but me, not really. Um, this is, of course, Matt Smith's first series of The Doctor. He is awesome. Uh, I really do like his Doctor. I think he's awesome. Um, and yeah, this series has got awesome, awesome highlights um, and no real poor episodes. Um, and we can say that, well, actually all but one series up ahead of this uh, haven't got really any poor episodes. So I don't, really, I don't really know what much else to say, except that I really like the series and that my favourite episode would have to be probably the finale, uh, but the 11th hour is awesome too. And least favourite, damn, it's a toss-up between uh, Vampires of Venice. Oh, no, yeah, it's, it's probably, Van yeah, probably Vampires of Venice. Um... So, yeah. But nah, overall, great series. I love watching it. Um, and yeah, no real weak episodes that I don't at least enjoy watching. So, uh, yeah, that's Series 5. Okay, coming in now at number 4, with a rating of 8.115 out of 10, uh, I have got Series 1. Uh, where it all started back in 2005, where it all started for me. Christopher Eccleston, the first Doctor I ever watched. Yeah, 
Um, I, I just love this series. Uh, of course, the only series with Christopher Eccleston in it. Oh, God, I wish he'd come back and do an episode, but it's never going to happen. But, yeah, this... I mean, this, this series is awesome. Uh, it, it really is, you know, right from the start. Uh, though there's no real big highlights up until Dalek, um, the, the first the first few episodes of the series are still really good. And then, of course, going through to, uh, you know, episodes like The Empty Child, Dr. Dances, and then the finale. There's just some really, really good episodes in this series. And it helps that Eccleston's the Doctor, because I wouldn't want this series with anyone else. Yeah, I, again, I really don't know how my, know what else to say other than uh, I love it. Um, I love Captain Jack being introduced. I love Rose in it. Um, and more than anyone, I love the Doctor. Favourite episode? <sighs> Probably the Empty Child Doctor Dances are a two-parter. But on any other day, maybe the finale, maybe Dalek. I don't know. Uh, they're all awesome. Least favourite? Uh, probably Father's Day. Uh, no, no, no. Long, uh, the Long Game. Long Game. Long Game is the only kind of meh kind of episode on this series. Moving on to number three now. Where we have, or I have got... A series with a rating of 8.29 out of 10, and that is Series 9. This one might be a little bit controversial, rating it this high, but I personally think this is Capaldi's best series. Of course, it's his second series. And th th this was the series that really made me fall in love with his Doctor. Um, Rewatching his episodes uh, in between The Power of the Doctor and The Star Beast, um, you know, I really liked his Doctor overall a lot more but especially Series 9, uh, especially him in Series 9. I, I love this series. I do. The two-parters throughout the whole series are great. I love it. Um, and it gives more time for stories to breathe, and I really like that. Um, but, yeah, I love Missy. I love Clara in this series more than Series 8 and Series 7. Um, and the last three episodes are possibly one of the best last three episodes in the entire of Doctor Who. Favourite episode have to be heaven sent that that episode's a masterpiece absolute masterpiece um but again like i said i love the last three episodes a lot uh and least favorite definitely sleep no more that that's the only episode that i wouldn't kind of rewatch um out of all of them so yeah all right that's at number three but now moving on to number two might be a little bit unexpected for some people um but with a rating of 8.35 out of 10 i have got series three I will admit, the first half of this series, for some people, is pretty mediocre. But for others, including myself, is okay. Uh, the second half is where the good stuff happens. Um, as soon as it hits human nature, family of blood, blink, turn, uh, not turn left, sorry, Utopia, Sound of the Drums, Last of the Time Lords. I mean, that streak of episodes is unbelievably good. Unbelievably good. Yeah, I like a lot of this series. And kind of going back to the first half, um, I like the Dalek two-parter. Um, I don't mind the Lazarus episode. I don't know, I think especially with the Lazarus one, because I grew up with it and didn't really care about the lousy, well, I shouldn't say lousy, the crappy CGI. Uh, I like it. I like a lot of this series. I really do. I love Martha. This is, of course, David Tennant's second series as the Doctor. He's great, uh, even though he's kind of, how do I say it, moping about Rose all the time. Uh, my favourite episode have to be Blink. Uh, th 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 that episode's iconic. My least favourite, probably still the Lazarus Experiment, but again, I don't really mind it, so... Uh, yeah, anyway, moving on now to number one. With a rating of 8.46 out of 10, I have got Series 4. I think for a lot of people this is the best series. It might be a bit different uh, in other people's rankings, but I think it's the best. Again, it's more the second half of the series where it all turns to gold. Uh, the last six episodes are even better than the last six, uh, I think, overall, uh, compared to Series 3. Um, yeah, as soon as it hits Science in the Library and goes all the way through to Journey's End, um, those six episodes are just fantastic. Absolutely awesome. I love The Doctor and Donna. This is, of course, David Tennant's third series as The Doctor. Um, and I probably like him the best in this one because the, the just the duo between him and Donna is just great. And of course, we very uh, happily see them again uh, in the 60th anniversary specials, which were awesome. Um, and yeah, I, overall, I, there's just so much I like about this series. The weakest episode for me would definitely be The Unicorn and the Wasp. I've never been a crazy fond of that episode. Um, 
but it's still all right. My favorite episode, I actually don't know. I don't know what my favorite episode would be. Um, it uh, probably turn left. Um, yeah, probably turn left. I really, really like that one. But I really, really like a lot of series for anyway. Um, but yeah, all the way through, though there's a bit of a kind of mediocre-ish patch from this, like with the Sontaran episodes through to Unicorn of the Wasp, it's still really good. So that, that that's my ranking. Um, so let me know your guys' rankings down in the comments below. Uh, if you guys hate my ranking, if you guys like my ranking, if you think it is very different to yours, let me know down in the comment section below. What are your favourite series? What are your least favourite series? So, after this video, um, I'm going to be ranking every uh, special, because um, specials aren't included in the series rankings here, so um, I want to touch on all those, especially now that the 60th anniversary and the Christmas special is now done. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, if you do like the video, then it would be really nice if you could leave a thumbs up. It is always good just to let me know that you're liking the videos, otherwise I've got no bloody clue. Um, and yeah, if you want more Doctor Who content, I guess just let me know as well. Uh, that'd be awesome. So, um, thanks for watching, um, and, uh, have a great rest of your day.